you're, you're presenting yeah. a different view, which is that aging is not normal how we see it today in this world. It's actually abnormal it's, it's aging. Exactly. So Peter, take us through some of the foundational concepts, because there's a lot of really wonderful science that's emerging. It's not quite ready for prime time, but take us through what we know now about the fundamentals of longevity, because you know this is not stuff you're necessarily hearing at your doctor's office, and it's redefining our whole framework of aging from being just a normal process, right? Oh, we look around us and we see, oh God, everybody gets sick. Six out of 10 Americans have a chronic illness. Four out of 10 have two or more. You know, 80% of us are overweight, 88% of us are metabolically unhealthy. I mean, it's just, we live in a, in a terrible world. So who wants to be old and decrepit and die? And, and nobody wants to do that. So you're, you're presenting a different view, which is that aging is not normal how we see it today in this world. It's actually abnormal it's, it's aging. A, it's and, exciting, and, Mark. So let me, let, me, let me begin by giving context about even the concept of aging. You know, our bodies, there are 40 trillion cells in our body. And our bodies evolved as homo sapiens hundreds of thousands of years ago. And if you go think back in time, we would go into puberty at age 13. And by the time we were 14, we were pregnant. And by the time we were 28, your baby was having a baby. Mm. And that was the cycle of life. The challenge was back then, food was scarce. There was no McDonald's, no Whole Foods. And the worst thing you could do if you wanted to perpetuate the species, was take food out of the mouth of your grandchildren. So you would die. The human body was never truly meant to live past age 30, 35, maybe 40. 100 years ago, the average lifespan was you know, just under 40. Today, it's risen up into the high 70s and the early 80s. And because we had a short life, there was no selective pressures against the diseases that we would have as we aged. So mm -hmm. there was no selective pressure against heart disease or cancer or dementia because no one ever lived long enough to have those things. And today we're realizing that we don't have to accept the genetic deck of cards that we were dealt over the last 100,000 years because we're beginning to get the tools that could allow us to modify those, uh, to identify and understand what isn't working and where we're going. Now, Here's another question, which I know you know the answer to, but you know, for people listening, uh, you've got the same genome when you're born as when you're 20, as when you're 40, 60, 80, or 100 years old. Yeah. You've got the exact same genome, 3.2 billion letters from your mother and 3.2 billion letters from your father. Why do you look different? Why don't you have the six pack that you had when you were a teenager, right? <laughs> um, and, and the same quality. You have a keg skin. instead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it turns out it's not your genes. It's which genes are turned on and which genes are turned off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's your epigenome, uh, epi from the mm -hmm. Greek word above. It's the control of the genes. And so, you know, if you look at the genome of a 20 year old, and if you could move that time, uh, go through time to a 60 year old person, the same person, you just find different genes are on and different genes are off. And the work that's being done, and we talk about, you know, uh, Tony and I highlighted a number of really heroes in the book. You know, Bob Hurry is one of the heroes we talk about. Carl June from uh, CAR-T therapy we'll talk about. But David Sinclair uh, and his work in understanding um, the epigenome uh, and some pivotal work he did on in December of 2020, published in the cover of Science, that he was able to reverse the age of the visual systems of mice who had lost their sight because they aged. He didn't just treat them, he made them biologically younger. He was able to use uh, what are called three of the Yamanaka factors. These are the four Yamanaka factors. Uh, Dr. Yamanaka won the Nobel Prize for this, being able to take your skin cell and de-differentiate it back into a pluripotent stem cell. Well, four, bring, four factors bring you all the way back. Three factors brought you back to a youthful state. And wait, wait, just to then, stop, stop you there for a second, yeah. just so people are listening, get what he's saying, what you're saying. Basically, there are these, these regulatory factors that control how your genes work that can take a skin cell or a liver cell or any cell in your body and bring it back to its original embryonic state where it can become anything else, which is radically changing our view of how we can regenerate our health and actually extend life. So these Yamanaka factors are a big deal. We're still figuring out how to use them, what to do with them. They're a little bit confusing, but it's just 
radically shifting our view, which is we literally have within us the code of a baby. <laughs> How yeah. do we activate that code yeah. and, and reprogram you know, that, our biology? Mice, what's interesting with those mice is they have glaucoma, so the nerves are gone. You don't regrow nerves in the brain. But by doing that reversal, they regrew them back and can see it's the first time in history it's happened. I'm sure it'll get nominated for a Nobel Prize. It's pretty extraordinary. It, it yeah. is. And then the work was done about six months later to do the same type of biological age reversal in the heart of mice. And now George Church is taking this into dogs. And the expectation is that we'll start to see this kind of technology in humans before the end of this decade. So to frame it properly, the entire conversation about age reversal, not longevity, because you can't truly prove longevity unless you know we're able to live 50, 60 years and say, well, this person now got to 150. But can you actually reverse age biologically measuring the epigenome? We'll, we'll get to those epigenetic clocks in a moment. But the conversation was crazy five years ago. Yeah. And today it's the hottest subject of research. And it's, we've just seen incredibly in this one year alone, uh, we saw the crown prince of, uh, of Saudi and of Abu Dhabi fund a multi-billion dollar foundation called Hevolution uh, that is investing in longevity and age reversal. Uh, we saw Yuri Milner and Jeff Bezos fund Altos Labs to hundreds of millions, clearly eventually billions of dollars. We saw the founder of Coinbase start a company. So we're seeing massive amounts of capital flowing in. Right? And the money- Not from the National Institutes of Health, unfortunately, which is no, only about- no. Out of, out of <laughs> but I'd rather trust the entrepreneurs to solve this problem and not the government. <laughs> it's actually you know, scary. One of the interesting things, Mark, too, is for, for your listeners, you know, one of the things that David discovered was, I, I'll give it to you in this in the simple non-doctor frame. Uh, uh, there's a couple terms that be useful. Now. So we know our DNA is not our destiny. And the metaphor we try to share with people is, you know, our DNA is the plan. It's like the piano. The epigenome is the piano player turning on and off. But these seven sirtuins, these seven master genes, do two things that are critical, two radically different things that are competitive a little bit. Because as you probably already know, your stem cells drop off in your 40s, and the source of fuel for these sirtuins drop off in your 50s. But these sirtuins, the first thing they do is they turn on and off. They affect the epigenome, which genes get turned off, whether you're going to get ill or not, whether you're going to age or not, is affected by it. They also affect inflammation, which, as we all know, is a basis of so much of disease. And they also affect your mitochondria, the source of energy in your body. They feed yeah. it. They make it possible to generate that energy. Yeah. Now, the other competing aspect is, as we get older, we accumulate challenges in our DNA because of radiation, chemicals, all things we're exposed Diet, to. So at 20, stress, you got a certain right. level. At 60, you got a lot more. And the metaphor that Bob often uses trying to explain even with stem cells is imagine you have this mansion, you have these great young staff members who fix everything all the time. It always looks beautiful. But as they get older, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you don't have the same resources and things to go fix, and you age. Well, these sirtuins, they're supposed to clean up your DNA. That's what they do. Mm. But their source of fuel is something I'm sure you've heard of, and lots of people have heard of, called NED+. Yeah. That's the yeah. fuel. If you don't have that fuel, sirtuins can't do their job. Yeah. And guess what? NED+, drops in your 50s through the floor by at least 50%. So now you've got this competing thing. When you need most of your DNA cleaned up, and your energy strong, and inflammation dealt with, and your genes there, it's all breaking down simultaneously. But the good news is, I'm sure you know, there's a precursor to NAD plus that allows it to go in the cell and maximize, and that's NMN, never mother, mm -hmm. never. Well, <laughs> you know, Peter and I, in our company, we went out and, you know, we knew the power of NMN because it's one of the things that Dr. Sinclair uses, one of his yeah. four core elements that's made him chronologically younger. He's got his 80-year-old father transformed through this. So we were quite excited about it. But if you go out in the marketplace, you can find NMN from 35 bucks to like $120. But we haven't found out of six companies any NMN left. And I was like, I talked to our guys. It's like, coming from China, are these people just thieves? And they said, well, they could be, but more likely it breaks down in 30, 45 days. So here's ah. the cool thing. There is some NMN that works right now. And that means all of this can be restored. And you can make this change in your body where you get the energy and the DNA cleanup so you can have sustained health. But there's a company called Microbiotech. And the founder of this has collected about 100, very much like Altos and others, some of the greatest people in regenerative medicine. And we got a chance to meet him, hang out with him. He's become a friend of mine. He's actually coming here again on Saturday. And he has created a crystallized version of MNN that doesn't break down. Amazing. But it's even more powerful. Think of this so your audience appreciates this. 
if you take an old mouse, a 70 or 65, 70 year old mouse is like, as you know, about 20 months old. And you put them on, you know, uh, on a, a, a track and they try and go, the most they can hit usually is a quarter of a kilometer. Whereas yeah. a young mouse can do a full kilometer, four times as much. Yeah. After 14 days on just this traditional NMN, yeah. they can run two to three kilometers, three kilometers literally yeah. two to 300 times more than a young mouse. But here's what's unbelievable. You go, well, yeah, but you know, I always go, well, my studies don't always transfer to humans. Well, this company, Microbiotech, unbeknownst to anybody else, has been working uh, in a top secret project with our, our armed services, specifically with the special forces. Yeah. And they did a two year study and the commander got so excited, he dropped the beans and it got exposed. He talked to a reporter and then last week it was in the Daily Mail, but their reporting is still not the real full details. And I can't tell you those either. We've invested in the company. We know some of the details, but I can tell you this. They just got their initial results back and it's unbelievable. Similar experiences. Think of the most fit people in the world, both men and women, special forces, now with greater endurance than they've ever imagined, building muscle faster with the same exact exercises and increased cognitive capacity. So yeah. now they've got, I think they're in phase three right now, beginning on a COVID test for preventing that because as you know, COVID comes into the mitochondria yeah. and sucks the energy out of it, right? Creates massive yeah. inflammation. And it's so far looking really good. They're doing some on kidneys because that's the other challenge, as you know, with COVID. Mm -hmm. And there, this looks like a huge breakthrough, but this will not yeah. be a nutraceutical. This is going through the FDA. And right now the FDA is pairing up what they're doing with the military. So they hope to have this out in 18 to 24 months. I mean, Amazing. these are the types Amazing. of breakthroughs that none yeah, of us could have even huge. dreamed of and, before and, the past. And what you both are talking about, I want to take a minute and zoom out for people because what you're talking about is not curing Alzheimer's or heart disease or cancer or diabetes. You're talking about going way upstream to deal That's with the right. root causes of all of it. And so we've been doing whack-a-mole medicine by trying to whack down these different yes, diseases by exactly. different pathways and different drugs exactly. and find a cure for cancer, the cure for Alzheimer's. Why have we spent billions of dollars and done over 400 studies on Alzheimer's and come up with nada, nothing? Yeah, single right? core because element. We're, because we're, let me finish for a yeah. second. So, so the key to think for people is that by looking at aging differently, by looking at what you're talking about, Tony, is you're not actually treating a disease. You're actually teaching the body using natural substances or things the body already does or already programmed into our DNA to regenerate, repair, renew, revitalize, and enhance what we already have and make us younger without treating disease. In functional medicine, I don't treat disease. I help people enhance their yes. function. Yes. That's what it is. That's exactly yes. what functional medicine is. I, I, yes, it's important to know what disease has. And yes, you need some drugs to help people who've already gone way down the path. But for most of us, these therapies, you were, your back was a freaking mess. Mine was a mess. And yet, somehow we figured out using yeah. these therapies to yeah. regenerate our tissues and revitalize ourselves so we're stronger like the bionic men at yeah. 62 years old, right? The, the this take, is what The take-home lesson is. here is aging is a disease itself. Yes. And it's yes. the single core commonality between all diseases. And the conversation that's changed and that we talk about in the book multiple places is the idea that aging is a disease that can be slowed, stopped, and for the first time ever, rationally thought about being reversed. Yes. And, and that's, you know, there's this concept called longevity escape velocity, uh, which you mentioned a little bit earlier, Mark, which, yeah. uh, which I love. Today, <laughs> you know, we're in this period of massive exponential growth where AI, computation, sensors, networks, robotics, 3D printing, synthetic biology, all these technologies are doubling in power every 18 to 24 months. And they give you miraculous things like, this conversation we're having today, right now, for free. It's awesome. <laughs> it's also changing the course of, uh, of the human lifespan, the health span. So today, we're gaining about a quarter of a year for every year that we're alive, about three months. Uh, there is a point uh, in which science is going to, all of a sudden, for every year that you're alive, extend your life for greater than a year. And that's called longevity escape velocity. So I've, you know, I've heard about this term from a long, for a long time, and I went and started asking people who I consider in the know when they think we're going to hit this. Yeah. So our, our uh, forward for the book is, is written by Ray Kurzweil, who's one of my mentors and dear friend of, of Tony's, my co-founder of Singularity University. And Ray's prediction is that we will see singularity, uh, singularity we'll see uh, escape velocity in about 12 to 15 years time. 
Wow. Uh, which is be in our 70s. The corner, right? <laughs> and, and so right when we're all going to need it. <laughs> well, <exactly. laughs> Listen, we are living in a video game. Don't ever forget it. We're going to get that at the last level of gameplay. But then I went to someone who is extraordinary. One of the other heroes in our book, Dr. George Church, uh, yeah. a friend, professor of genomics at Harvard Medical School. Uh, he has started 24 companies in 24 months. Just brilliant beyond belief as an entrepreneur and a core scientist. And I was having the same conversation with him for this book and asked, you know, so George, when do you think we're going to see longevity escape velocity? I expected him to say 30 years, 20 years, probably about within the next 15 years. And I'm like, oh my God, that's extraordinary. Now, two points don't make a proof of it, but from two different perspectives. So if that's true, if uh, we have the ability uh, to reach this departure point of longevity escape velocity in 15 years, all of our jobs is to reach that point, to not it's die. Follow, we want to follow the Bee Gees uh, not, song, Staying Alive. Yeah, Staying Alive. <laughs> you know, our job is not to die from something stupid in the interim. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps get the word out. And if you love the content that I talk about, present about, please subscribe to this channel. And one more thing, don't forget, please give me your comments down below. I love seeing what you think about all of this. We put a lot of time into it with incredible people and would love to have your feedback. <laughs>